Hello, class eight. Welcome to English lecture. Today I am going to explain you from your textbook that is Prime English Chapter Three, a question of grammar, which was written by Richmond Crompton. Student, before I'll start the chapter, first I will give you little gist about the chapter who has written this beautiful story, and um, let's begin the introduction of uh, author. Then we'll continue with the chapter. Just William Richmond Crompton. Richmond Crompton was born on fifteenth November eighteen ninety, and she was a popular English writer, best known for her Just William English writing and series of books, humorous short stories, and to a lesser extent, adult fiction books also. She trained to become a teacher. She took up writing as a profession at the age of twenty seven. She has written more than forty novels and numerous short stories for both children and adults. Her Just William series was much appreciated for its innovativeness and lack of sensitivity. Crompton's best-known books are the William stories about a mischievous eleven years old schoolboy and his band of friends, known as the Outlaws. Her first short story featuring William to be published was Rice Mold Pudding published in Home Magazine in 1919. In 1922 the first collection entitled Just William was published. She wrote 38 other William books throughout her life. The last William The Lawless was published in 1970. The William books sold over 12 million copies in UK alone they have been adapted for films stage plays and numerous radio and television series which was illustrated by Thomas Henry Crompton saw her real work as writing adult fiction starting with the innermost room in 1923 she wrote 41 novels for adults and published nine collection of short stories Their focus was generally village life in the home counties though these novels have the same inventiveness and lack of sentimentality as the William books after the second world war such literature had an increasingly limited appeal even william was originally created for a grown up audience as she saw just william as a port boy she was pleased by its success but seemed frustrated that her other novels and short story did not receive the same recognition now student this is the small gist about the author who has written this story and now we'll begin with the chapter and we'll come to know what this story is all about student imagine you have planned a party at your house you have invited all your friends and made all the arrangements however you find out that your parents have to go out and won't be around during the party so your party is going to be unsupervised now just imagine if you have organized a party at your home but your parents are not over there who obviously the adult used to supervise the party but nobody was available over that time and then all alone this boy has to maintain a party and arrange uh, arrange things how this boy arrange the things how mischievous he is how naughty he is and did he is taken permission from his parents or not will continue will come to know in this chapter when we'll continue reading this story it was raining it had been raining all morning william was intensely bored with his family what can i do he demanded of his father for the 10th time nothing said his father fiercely from behind his newspaper william followed his mother into the kitchen what can i do he said plaintively couldn't you just sit quietly suggested his mother that's not doing anything william said i could sit quietly all day he went on aggressively and if i wanted to but you never do no because there wouldn't be any sense in it would there couldn't you read or draw or something no that's lessons that's not doing anything I could teach you to knit if you like with one crushing glance William left her 
now in this very first paragraph student you can see that um, scene have been started with the uh, you know it's raining heavily and uh, william is a young boy who is approximately 11 year old and he is getting bored in home because he has no work to do so he is roaming here and there and then he immediately came to his father and for the 10th time 10th time means a number of times he has already asked from his father what can i do what can i have so again on the 10th time he asked from his father what can i do student like we all do in our home when we were kids or when you all are must be facing that whenever you are getting bored especially during the lockdown time you are not you cannot go out to play you cannot do anything so you have no work to do so in the same way this boy is not having any work to do so he is all the time he is going each member of the family and he is asking same question what can i do now he replied in a very fierce way nothing and uh, you should do some other work or either go to your mother now when william got this type of reply from his father then he went to the kitchen where his mother is cooking something and uh, again he asked in a plaintively means student i would like to tell you the meaning of plaintively means sadly now again he went to his mother and he asked in a very sad mood mother what can i do now again she said that uh, do something creative do something fruitful do something now again he asked from his mother at uh, one time two time and three time again and again now he, his mother replied that uh, if you want then i can teach you knitting knitting you know what is the meaning of knitting knitting means uh, if you knit something you knit uh, like a uh, sweater or anything shawl something like this or even a cloth or designer cloth this is what she is telling to him that if you want i can teach you how to knit then in a very crushing glance means crushing glance means in a very weird kind of reaction william give her a reaction and then he left uh, left her and she and he went uh, went out from the kitchen now in the next paragraph you can see he went to the drawing room where his sister ethel was knitting a jumper and talking to a friend what are you doing william said the friend sweetly nothing said william with a scowl shut the door when you go out won't you william said ethel equally sweetly william rose with dignity at that insult and went to the door at the door he turned i won't stay here now he said with slow contempt not even if even if even if he paused to consider the most remote contingency not even if you wanted me he said at last emphatically he shut the door behind him and his expression relaxed into a sardonic smile i bet they feel small he said to the umbrella stand he went to the library where his 17 year old robert was showing off his new rifle to a friend now in the second paragraph of the same page in this page uh, author is trying to explain that uh, now when he got a you know plain reply from his mother and father then he immediately went to his sister her name was ethel and she was knitting a jumper uh, along with a friend now uh, her friend asked from william uh, what are you doing william said nothing and again her sister her sister's friend asked the same question before you go out please shut the door now william felt very insulting he thought that they don't want uh, they don't want me to sit over there and they are indirectly or sweetly they are asking me to go out of the room now i won't stay here he said with slow contempt not even if now he thought in a very you know aggressive way and he said no i don't even want to stay and i will definitely go out of the room contingency student means and even that is possible in future but is not certain emphatically means forcefully and sardonic means mocking now uh, in a and in a very not even if you wanted me he said it emphatically emphatically means forcefully he said even i am not interested to sit over here he shut the door behind him and his expression relaxed into a sort of now in a very mocking smile he left that room and then he went to library and his uh, his old brother robert his name was robert was showing off his new rifle to a friend now his brother robert who is showing a rifle to a friend 
let's come to the next page or next slide in this page you see you see he was saying then catching sight of william's face round the door oh get out william got william got out now he's uh, you know he wanted to talk to robert and he wanted to spend or you know utilize his time but again when he went in library he was saying then catching sight of william face round the door oh get out william got out now he asked him william to go out and then william get out now student why do you think nobody wants to spend time with william because everyone is busy in their own work mother is busy in kitchen father is busy in reading newspaper sister is busy in knitting and his brother is robert who is busy in showing rifle to his friend now let's come to the next paragraph uh, he went to he uh, he went to the he returned to his mother in the kitchen with a still more jaundiced view of life now jaundiced jaundice means it is a kind of a disease but here it is meaning bitter it is not that jaundice which we have like a fever it is something bitter bitter view of life the meaning is quite different it was still raining his mother was looking at the tradesman book can i go out he said gloomily no of course not it's pouring i don't mind rain don't be silly william considered that few boys in the whole world were handicapped by more unsympathetic parents than he why he said pathetically have they got friends in an and me not in this paragraph author is trying to explain that again he is getting so bored now everyone is you know asking him to go out move out now again he went to the kitchen and again he is you know in a very bitter mood he went to and asked same question from mother mother can i go out now again uh, she said no and uh, she replied that it's still it's raining heavily and you are not supposed to go out otherwise you will feel ill william considered that few boys in the now good william is thinking it's a child thought student now he is thinking that everyone is having good parents only he is having that kind of pathetic parents who who are not supporting him and uh, everyone is neglecting him and he is like a odd one out in a family he is going each and every member and asking for you know some time to spend some so that he can spend some time but everyone is busy in their own schedule of work so everyone is asking him to go out move out don't disturb let it go these types of reaction by this type of reaction william is getting really very annoyed now what kind of handicap did william suffer from an account of his parents please student keep noting these types of question because when the school will get open i will check your all these types of question and answers in your assignment copy now this uh, please note this question what kind of handicap did william suffer from on account of his parents now in the next paragraph i suppose you didn't think of asking anyone she said calmly well can i have someone now no it's too late said mrs brown raising her head from the butcher's book and murmuring 10 and 11 pence to herself well can i she raised a harassed face william do be quiet any time if you ask 18 and 2 pence can i have lots oh go and ask your father william went out he dirt he returned to the dining room where his father was still reading a paper now uh, he went to, again to you know mrs brown is counting some 11 pence pence is kind of coins she is counting uh, money and now he is asking that can i do can i take now she is getting disturbed and she you know she you know just harassed her face and raised an eyebrow and she said please don't help me and you go out and she is actually doing some kind of counting and important work and she doesn't want that william should come and disturb her now when uh, she said to go to your father then he went again he went to his father now can you see student some of the time he is going to mother father he is crawling from one place to another now he returned to the dining room again where his father was still reading a paper the sigh with which water greeted his entrance was not one of belief if you have come to ask question he began threateningly i haven't said william quickly father when you are all away on saturday can i have a party no of course not 
said his father irritably can't you do something the sort of things i want to do they don't want me to do and the sort of things i don't want to do they want me to do mother said to knit this corn and furry were indescribable his father looked out of the window thank heaven it is stopped raining go out william went out now in this paragraph student this is a very sarcastic paragraph now again he came to his father and asking that uh, father on are you uh, it means that he's about to ask the question now what his father replied because from the morning i have already told you from the morning 10 time he was asking what can i do what can i do how do i spend time so this time again when he come to his father then he asked from his father that um, his father replied that have you come over here to ask any question now he said in a very uh, quickly no father i haven't come to ask any question i'm only come over here to ask the permission that on coming saturday you are going out can i have a party and can i call my friends for the party now in a very uh, irritating you know irritating kind of reaction father said no you are not supposed to do any kind of party and you are not supposed to call anyone in on my absence now this type of uh, when he got this type of reaction uh, william got very you know very nasty and now he's thinking that um, whatever i don't want to do they are asking me to do this like mother said to knit and i don't like knitting so knit is not my job so he uh, immediately got irritated and annoyed and then his corn and furry were indescribable his father looked out of the window now when he was thinking all these things then immediately father looked out of the window and he saw that it is it is stopped raining and he asked william please to go out and have uh, have uh, time to spend and then william immediately go out and enjoyed his time now student please note one more question what do you think william would do after going out let's come to next paragraph he came home wet and dirty and cheerful he approached his father wearily did you say i could have a party father he said casually no i did not said mr brown firmly william let the matter rest for the present he spent most of the english grammar class in school next morning considering it there was a great deal to be now in this paragraph can you see student that uh, William is you know almost ready to go out and when he went out he was almost wet and dirty and uh, now again he came to his father and again asked the same question that can I have a party He's, again he replied no then um, William let the matter rest he thought that it is not a good idea to you know ask same question again and again otherwise my father will get annoyed I will ask this question when his mood is good now he spent most of the English grammar classes next morning and considering it means now he is studying and going back to his work let's come to the next slide or next page in this way now Set for a party in the absence of one's parents and grown-up brother and sister, he would like to ask George and Ginger and Henry and Douglas and, and, and heaps of them. He would like to ask them all. They were the whole class 13 number approximately. What have I, what have I just been saying, William? William signed. Was it anything about participles? He remembered something vaguely about participle, but it might not have been today. Miss Jones groaned. That was ever so long ago, William. She said, you have not been attending. William cleared his throat with a certain dignity and made no answer. Tell him, Henry. Now what happened? Uh, he is, you know, actually planning for the party. Now one by one he is discussing among friends and talking with his friends about the party and he is planning that on Saturday his parents are going. So he is calling one by one like his George, Ginger, Henry, Dr. Actually, he was not interested what teacher was actually teaching yes what's a negative William William signed something about photographs he said obliquely no snap miss Jones she found William and the heat rather trying now he's only trying but he's not able to reply a proper answer now when she was asking about the negative he said it's about the photograph now let's come to the next page or next slide it's no and not and an affirmative is yes. 
O said William politely. So two no's and not mean yes. If they are in the same sentence, if you said there are not no money in the box, you mean there is. Now she is explaining that no not in one sentence is supposed to be yes. So William said O. Oh. He gave this kind of reaction O. Oh. Now then he said no's and not means yes. In the same sentence, there is not no money in the box. It means that there is a money. Now William understood the chapter what she was teaching. William considered it. He said O oh, again. Then he seemed suddenly to become intelligent. Now again he said O, oh, and teacher found that he is quite intelligent in grasping the things. Then he said, if you say no and not in the same sentence, does it mean yes? Teacher replied certainly. William smiled. William's smile was a rare thing. Thank you, he said. Now, what he is thinking that um, when teacher was explaining the chapter means two no means yes. So he asked again the same question means two negative sentence make one positive sentence. She said certainly. Now, student, can you think what he what was going on in his mind? Why do you think William smiled? Please write this question and try to give me the answer of this question. and um, i hope you know that why william was smiled because william was knowing that his father said no no two times and then he is considering that no no in a positive way in that his father is allowing him for the party this is what he was thinking now let's come to the next paragraph miss jones was quite touched it's all right william he said I am glad you are beginning to take an interest in your work. William was murmuring to himself, "No, of course not." And no, I did not. I a no and a not mean a yes. So he meant yes, of course, and yes, I did. He waited till Friday before he gave his invitation with a casual air. My folk is going away. My folk is going away means uh, he is trying to you know. Uh, he is trying to convey the message that his parents are almost about to go out uh, from house and they can have a good time to spend time along with his friend now i could have a few friends in to tea can you come tell your mother they just said to come and not bother to write he was a born strategist not one of his friends parents guessed the true state of affairs when william conscious rose to reapproach him he said to it firmly he said i could he said yes of course he said yes i did he asked them all he thought that while you are having a party you might as well have a big one he hinted darkly at an unrestrained joy and mirth they all accepted the invitation now in this paragraph student what is happening over here uh, miss jones was highly impressed by his statement and uh, she got touched and she thought that uh, he is understanding and trying to take interest on the particular chapter what she was teaching now william was murmuring to himself now william was why william was murmuring to himself because he knows he is thinking that his father said no two times it means that yes and now he is what he is murmuring on his mind no of course not and no i did not and no 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 not mean a yes so in this way he is calculating and murmuring among himself he waited till friday now he was waiting for friday so that on friday he can give an invitation to his friends and his friend can could come for the tea and have a party bash at his house now when he uh, when he was planning he you know he said to all his friend that please inform your parents about the party invitation and um, you should convince your pa parents in a such a way so that they do, do not say no for the party and you all should come and we'll have a great fun now he he is a strategist as i told you that he is a very smart and intelligent boy william how smartly he planned and he you know invited all his friend that no parents uh, able to say no to for no for the party invitation so all the parent allowed uh, their friends to have a party and get together at a tea and then he asked them all he thought that while you are having a party you might as well have a big one he hinted darkly in unrestrained joy and mirth he said that we'll have a great fun we'll have a great enjoyment and you all will have a great fun 
now student let's come to the another paragraph uh, please note one more question why do you think all his friends accepted william's invitation why do you think that all the friends accepted william's invitation because his invitation was quite tempting and he said that we'll have a great fun we'll have a great enjoyment and uh, it's uh, there is no kind of nothing boundation no rules regulation so that is why all are excited and uh, interested to come over his party now william's mother took an anxious farewell of him on saturday morning you don't mind being left darling do you no mother said william with perfect truth you won't do anything we have told you not to will you no mother only things you have said yes to cook and jane had long looked forward to this day there would be very little to do in the house and as far as william was concerned they hoped for the best William was out all morning at lunch he was ominously quiet and polite Jane decided to go out with her friends about 3 o'clock the postman came and cook went to the door for the letters then she stood gazing down the road as though transfixed now in this paragraph student author is explaining that uh, william mother was you know going out and as it was saturday morning and on saturday his parent has to go somewhere for some work in the same way they all were planning to go out now he is making comfortable to william and his sister jane and uh, he is asking that uh, she is asking that uh, you'll have a lunch on time do the things properly please don't let anyone get inside the house and uh, try to utilize your time for something like all parents give the instruction in the same way his parents are also giving the instruction now when they went out uh cook and jane had long look forward to this day now they know that it's a long day and we have to spend the time there would be very little to do in the house uh there's no much work to do in the home now everyone is busy and doing some work now at lunch uh, both of them had um, all of them had lunch and jane decided now his sister decided to go out and spend time with his friend now it's approximately 3 o'clock the postman uh, you know rang the bell and the cook went out and then to receive a letter when she went out she got transfixed transfixed student means not being able to move due to horror or shock basically she got shocked uh, and now we'll come to know why did she got shocked please turn the page and uh, let's come to the next slide william had collected his guest and root he was bringing them joyfully home with him they trooped in at the garden gate cook pale and speechless watched them then her speechlessness departed now in this paragraph student can you see that william is coming along with his guest and she immediately got shocked that they all are coming from the from garden gate and can you see in the picture that cook is got quite shocked and she shocked to see so many children and they all are coming to get inside you are not coming in here she said fiercely you what have you uh, what you have uh, brought all those boys cluttering up the garden for they have come to tea said william calmly she grew paler still now she said in a very fierce way why are you coming along with so many boys now william said that they have all come for the tea now she became you know pale and she it is very obvious because his parents and uh, their guard have not allowed any one any one uh, to come inside the home and disturb the disturb home so she got shocked that uh, how should how should she be able to control so many children coming to to the uh, to wait to the home that they have not see, she said fiercely what your father said now she is saying that she is reminding him that uh, have you taken permission from your father and uh, did you take the permission did he, did he allowed you to cause so many children at the same time he said they could come said william i asked him and he said yes of course and i asked if he said so and he said yes i did that's what he said because of english grammar what miss jones said cook's answer was to slam the door in his face and lock it now immediately when he said yes i have taken the permission and he said yes and he allowed the uh, children to come and have fun 
uh, in home now she immediately got uh, very annoyed and she closed the door on his face only and she said no i will not allow any of the children to come inside the 30 guest was slightly disconcerted disconcerted means unsettled but not for long come on shouted william excitedly she is the enemy let's storm her old castle the guest spirit rose this promised to be infinitely superior to the usual party now what did he said in this paragraph he said that don't worry she is our enemy and she if she is not allowing her to enter the house we know how to get inside they swam round to the back of the house the enemy had bolted the back door and was fastening all the windows purple with furry she shook her first at william through the drawing room window william badished badished means student waved in anger his piece of stick and blew his trumpet in defiant reply defiant reply means openly resistant william decided to climb up to the balcony outside at his open bedroom window with the help of his noble band the air was full of their defiant war whoop they filled the front garden trampling on all the rose bed trampling the freshly moved lawn cheering william as he swung up to the balcony his trumpet between his lips now in this paragraph now students in this paragraph author is explaining that how naughty his william and his friends are now when she closed the door he called her he called her cook uh, enemy and uh, now he is you know uh, she is trying to lock the windows and uh, all doors from of her of that house now what he is doing he is playing the trumpet trumpet is a kind of instrument uh, it's a musical instrument which uh, you know uh, which musician used to play so william is playing that trumpet in a loud wo- noise and he and all his friends uh swanned up the you know garden which was you know beautifully decorated and they spoiled the garden and the lawn and uh, they disturbed the rose beds and moving here and there all the children have been you know uh, scattered all over the place and uh, they are trying to enter from any of the part and then he found that ethel bedroom window was open so his all noble band noble band means his group is trying to enter through that window now let's come to the next paragraph or next page we'll come to know what happened next in this paragraph the enemy appeared at the window and shut it with a bang and william starlit is dropped down among his followers they raised a hoarse roar of anger all the doors and windows were bolted there was only one thing to be done the stone with which william broke the drawing room window fell upon a small side table scattering mrs brown's cherished silver far and wide now what he is doing that he found that all the doors and windows have been closed so they were all shouting and yelling and creating and disturbing the things and uh, they are just like shouting like a horse like a anger like you know when children talk even you all also when you talk in class you make a you make a hell so in the same way these children are making lot of noise and they are disturbing the cook and they are and now what william does william is not having any option to get inside so he found a stone and he thrown that stone in a you know with a high speed on drawing room window and that the stone went up to the there was a table in which some silver uh mr uh, mrs brown's favorite cherished silver uh, wa- far and white some piece was re- kept uh, and that has been you know cracked and trashed away believe with a born generous contempt for the minor devastation of war and dash the whole and help his gallant band through with only a limited number of cuts and scratches they were drunk with the thrill of battle the enemy was shutting the small window of the coal cellar and there william imprisoned her turning the key with a loud yell of triumph now what he's doing he is uh, you know he is getting in a very you know in a loud way with his band he is you know he's he has done a lot of scratches he has thrown stones he has disturbed the you know he's disturbed the garden rose beds and window curtains the pieces the decoration 
and he's shouting yelling and calling her enemy enemy most of the time turning the key with a loud yell of trim so all these things he is doing just to get inside the house which he has not taken permission from his parents for the party and just imagine he is doing all these things without taking permission and disturbing his cook as well now student do you think that this was the right way of having fun no i don't think so that this is the right way to have fun i think william is a very naughty and mysterious boy let's come to the next paragraph the party then proceeded it fulfilled the expectation of the guests that it was to be party and like any other up the stairs and down the stairs in all the in all the uh, stairs and down the stairs in all the bedrooms sliding down the balusters balusters means decorative pillars supporting the railing of stairs and uh, out of the drawing room leaving trace of muddy boots and shattered ornaments as they went it was william who discovered first that it was tea time and there was no tea at first he felt slightly aggrieved then he thought of the larder and his spirit rose now in this paragraph author is explaining that uh, now party has been as they have got inside the house now party has been started and um, he there some of the children are you know there's a railing inside the house stairs are going inside the house and they all were you know snagging moving here and there their muddy boots inside the house they are just the floor is getting you know dirty and muddy and um, they all were disturbing the decoration and then william immediately in all such messy thing he found that he called all his friend for the tea but there was no tea available so at first he feel firstly he thought that he found very you know aggressive then he thought that uh, it's not a big issue let's get inside the kitchen and uh, then he said to all his friend whatever you find you can have that and you are full free you i'm giving you full freedom you can have and eat anything whatever you want they trooped in painting shouting laughing and all just got what they could ginger seized the remains of a cold ham and picked the bone george with great gusto drank a whole jar of cream my god william and douglas ate a gooseberry pie between them henry ate a whole currant cake each forged for himself they ate two bowls of cold vegetable a joint of meat two pots of honey three dozen oranges three loaves and two gallons of grape juice they went, left the larder a place of gaping emptiness meanwhile cook's voice growing horror and hoarser as the result of the inhalation of coal dust and exhalation of imprecations is still arose from the depth and still the door of the coal cellar shook and rattled then one of the guests who had been in the drawing room window came back she's coming home he shouted excitedly now i've told you in this paragraph they are just doing whatever they want to do some are eating whole jar of ice cream gooseberry pie eaten whole currant cake roaming here and there dozen of oranges vegetable fruits whatever they all are finding they are doing this now cook voice is getting you know more Hoarser means um, a rough caused by sore throat means she's yelling, she's shouting, don't do this, don't do that. But still, nobody is listening to her, and they are doing whatever they want to do. Then all of a sudden, in all this mess, somebody has replied back that she's coming, she's coming. He shouted excitedly. They flocked to the window. Jane was bidding a fond farewell to her young man at the side gate. Don't let her come in, yelled William. Come on. now uh, when she was shouting everyone is making so much of noise immediately somebody said that uh, somebody is coming it was jane and she was coming inside the home jane is sister of william and she is coming uh, she is coming inside now william said that don't let her come inside otherwise she'll despoil our party and let's plan something so that she could not enter the house now student why do you think the kids didn't want jane to come in obviously because their party will get spoiled with a smile of blissful reminiscence upon her face jane turned in at the gate uh, blissful reminiscence means student recollection of something happy let's come to the next page or next slide totally unprepared for being met by a shark 
of missiles from the upper window now she is unprepared she doesn't know what is going inside the house and uh, she is coming as a normal day as she used to come inside the home and uh, but she was not knowing that missiles uh, from the upper window means that uh, band of children are you know prepared so that she could not enter the house a lump of lard hit her on the ear and knocked her hat to one side she retreated hastily to the side gate now lump of lard means means a kind of uh, you know a, uh, it's a big uh, abdomen white part and uh, they were you know just disturbing and they are uh, they want that she should get annoyed so that she could not enter the house and knocked her hat she was wearing some hat and they were you know, pulling and pitching her hat the, she retreated hastily to the side gate now she is you know she is moving from the side gate now go on send her into the road now everyone is saying that go on and send her to the road she should go uh, back to the road a shower of onion now they are throwing the onion the ham bone and a few potatoes persuaded her into the road on the road shouts of trump rent the air then the shouts of trump died away abruptly now immediately when they are making so much of noise they are throwing onion potatoes number of things and so that she should not enter immediately the trump noise got shut and uh, william's smile also got faded away and his hand in the act of flinging an onion dropped also why because a cab was turning it at the front gate and in the sudden silence that fell upon the party crooks hoarse cries for vengeance vengeance means revenge rose with redoubled force from the coal cellar william grew pale now when he saw that a cab is coming and his family is also coming towards the house immediately his all smile all naughtiness all the messy which he has creating along with his friend got stopped and uh, cook immediately she was shouting and yelling like anything she also got uh, you know she also got uh, uh, you know vigils big vigils means she was ready to take revenge how he has disturbed her how uh, you know he was not listening to her so now she got an opportunity that he will get a good thrash from his parents and the cap contained his family on that cap there is his family and as we all know what next is going to happen with william so student this is a this is a story of a, j, taken from just williams and uh, this is a story of a naughty boy who is very naughty and doing mischievous activity mischievous activity basically a question of grammar williams willful misunderstanding of a double negative leads him to throw a wild uh, party in his parents absence and uh, williams joins the band of hope william is forced to join uh, join the temperance movement along with the other outlaws but manages to turn the first meeting into a punch up so this story has been written by this is the short stories which is taken from just williams and this is the sixth chapter uh, which have been taken from you know from the series of humorous stories and it is written by richmond crompton i hope you have understood that chapter now student what you have to do please take out read the chapter thoroughly and again if you find any kind of difficulty i have given you the difficult word also i have given you the meaning of difficult word also what you all have to do please take out the question answers and uh, try to write those answers in your assignment copy and on my next video i will give you